Hi guys, Archie Luxury on the Paul Pluto channel. Quick, 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 whist, 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 watch, check. Panic, Philippe, 5035. Today we're doing the Archie Luxury baby steps. The baby steps to, des to building horological, horological collection of significance. Okay, the second step. The first step was liquidate the shitters. <laughs> now, the second step is a bit of planning. Design a mythology. Design a mythology. What do I mean by that there? Okay. I got to tell you something. When I was in high school and I had an English competition, I remember it was English exam and they said you can write an essay on anything you like. Suddenly it became very hard. When they gave you a topic, a couple of topics, you picked one, you tried to answer their questions. So I got to tell you, one of the best things you can do if you want to build a beautiful watch collection is design a mythology, a mythology, an ethos. How are you doing these things? How are you doing this? Just out of interest there, that's one of the carpet beetles. They turn. When they carpet beetles, they get older. They turn into little animals like that. Okay. Now, i got to tell you, the mythology. What do I mean by mythology? Now, I've already said get rid of the shitters. Okay, so now we're saying what do we want in a collection? Let me give you a couple ideas. you got to get some guidelines. Now, I know rules are meant to be broken. Of course they are. But some basic guidelines could be we want no quartz. We want to have Rolex. We could build. you got to build. What do you want? You want to just collect Rolex. Do you want to just collect divers? So you could build a collection of divers having a Rolex diver, sub and sea dweller, deep sea, a Tudor Black Bay, Breitling Super Ocean Heritage, a Blanc Pan. There's many, 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 many collect just diving genre. The other thing you could collect is one brand per watch. <laughs> one brand. One brand per watch. So, in my case there, I was building a collection. I had a Paddock World Time. I had a Rolex Explorer 2. I had an Amiga Speedmaster Man on the Fucking Moon. I had a Jager Lacoutre Reverso. I had a Breguet Type 20. I had an IWC Ingenua. I had a Tudor Black Bay. I had a Breitling Super Ocean Heritage. I had a Hoya Monaco Caliber 11. I had... What else did I have there? Uh, I was building it like that. One watch per brand. And that was interesting because instead of buying a couple of Breitlings or a couple of Rolex, you had to really, really think about which one represented the brand for you. And if I wanted to update it, I could sell, I'd have to sell it. So you put these little rules in place. Another good friend of mine, Descartes. Descartes, he had an interesting ethos when he was collecting years ago. He said he wanted to collect watches with a travel theme <clears throat> so he started off his first watch was a rolex gmt i think he had the coke then he got a when he made partner he got a speedy speedmaster sapphire sandwich I, I didn't understand how the sapphire sandwich was travel related but he said look it's an international he, he, he had some just that's okay it's his collection then he got a he got a a explorer two, so they all had to have travel type uh, connotations. He got a paddock five one three four, which is the travel time Calatrava, uh, and and he, he he built his collection with a travel theme, and that that's quite interesting. It's quite an interesting collection, um, and I I I got to tell you, in all honesty. You've got to set the rules yourself. There's other, there's a very famous collector in England, Mike Wood, 
<clears throat> he collects vintage Rolex Submariners. Well, vintage Rolex, but a lot of Submariners. What a great idea there. So I think you've got to design a mythology. Uh, what do you really, really want? And <clears throat> I've I got to tell you, I've, I've had different mythologies at different times. When I started off, I started off with... I started off collecting Rolex. A lot of I was heavily into Rolex. So in the late 90s, I had Rolex. I had a, a day date, 18238. I had an Explorer 2, 16570. Steel sub date, 16610. I had a Datejust, 16013. And I also had a 16800 sub as a beater. That was my watches. I remember that. that was, I was very, very proud of that. So Rolex, Rolex, Rolex. Then I sold it for personal reasons, and <clears throat> uh, I, I kind of, it was depressing. I, I started building a little collection again. I always had this desire, like a like bees. The nest is destroyed. They start again, start again, start again. Then I started, I remember, uh, I got a sub 16, sorry, not a sub. I got a date just 16, steel date just 16, 220. Then I got a 14060. No date Submariner Diver. And then I, then I got a, I, I fucked it up again and I sold them off. Money was tight. And then it kind of, what happened with me is I kind of fumbled a bit. I had pieces. I, I had a Cartier Torno for a while, sold that. Uh, I had a few really interesting things. Then... You know, I ran into a few problems. It was only until the late noughties. Late noughties, I had a... a uh, I remember I had four pieces. At late noughties, I had... This is 2007, 2008. I had a 16233 two-tone date just with diamond dial. I had a Speedy, Amiga Speedmaster Man on the Moon. I had a Breitling Navi Timer, old Navi Timer 2. And I had a Cartier Moon Phase two-tone Santos. Quartz. <laughs> and then I sold all of that <clears throat> and got a paddock 5107 when I got an inheritance. I, I just, I thought, oh no, I, I, I was a bit silly. I, I should have just kept a few. But I, I sold that and put the money into it. Well, for me at the time, it was very expensive. A 5107 was, it was cost me 12250 in 09. I thought, wow, that's a lot of money. And uh, it, it, it's interesting. So then, then, then I had the Archie Five. Uh, then I had, you know, I had so many in, incarnations. Now, now, what's my basis? My mythology. Well, my mythology is Patek and Pussy. Patek and Pussy. I collect these for me. People say you got five identical Pateks. Five identical Pateks. Well, that's my money. I can do what the fuck I like, can't I, eh? So now, what my mythology is, is Paddock and Pussy. That's the meaning of life. The meaning of life is Paddock and Pussy. So I got five Paddocks. As a beater, beater, I got a... As a beater, 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 where's my beater, beater, where's my beater gone? My beater, my beater watch is my Jagala... J. J. Le Coutre. J. J. Le Coutre. J. J. Le Coutre. J. J. Le Coutre. And if you're not familiar with J. J. Le Coutre. That's my beater. That's my beater. That's my beater. That's my beater. The beater watch I got there. The J. J. Le Coutre. But I got the five paddocks. I love them. I love them. I love them. My J. J. Le Coutre. J. G. Le Coutre. Reverso Grande. So my other Pateks, I love them. I love them. I love them. I love them to death. Absolutely love Patek and Pussy. Patek and Pussy is the meaning of life. <clears throat> it's the meaning of life to me. Meaning of life. So for me, I'm, now my mythology is, well, I wanted to build a little collection of Pateks. It's Patek, Patek, Patek. I got a, I wanted a calendar Patek. I wanted a world time. A, a travel paddock, either a travel time or a, a world time. 
I wanted cal a Calatrava. I've actually got three Calatravas. My next one I'd like to add, I mean, if the old man carks it, okay? If the old man carks it, I'd like to get a Chronograph Panic. Chronograph Panic. Yes, indeed, like a 5170. But I need a big inheritance to cover that one, that's for sure. And he seems pretty healthy, to be honest with you. I would like to, I've got the Reverso as my beta. I'd also like to add a Rolex again. I, I do want to get a Rolex as a beta. But I'm, I'm happy with my five paddocks, and I'm investing in paddock books and literature. A lot of catalogs from that period where my watches are in. I like to have that sort of stuff there. Anyone's got old paddock catalogs you don't want, happy to post them to me. Look at the P.O. box down in the description. I'd love to get them, and I'll give you a plug on the channel. So basically, designer mythology, what is it that makes you happy in life? Do you Look, it's, it's whatever you want. Don't let other people tell you what to do. You've got to do what you want. friend of mine, he's got, he's got, he's, he had gold, gold Rolex sports. Beautiful. Vintage is another thing. You know, you've got to decide. You can have a mix match, whatever you want. This is the beautiful thing in a democracy. You can decide whatever the fuck you want. You can make it a reality. You can make it a reality. And uh, for me, I, I like the paddocks. I love Patek and Pussy. That's what I like is Patek Philippe and Pussy. Pussy and Patek. That's really makes me really float the boat. It really makes me happy to have Patek and Pussy. Uh, I'm just going to put my reverso on now. I, I'd like to get a, I think, I think for my 50th coming up, I would really like to have, and I'm going to tell you, buying and selling and all this, this journey I've done, I, I'm sick of, I am sick of it now. I'm honestly starting to say, hey, don't sell the watches. <clears throat> I've, I've never been that rich. I've had to sell them to buy the next amazing thing. And, you know, looking back, it is sad. I, I've got another friend of mine, Paul, who, um, and he's got all the watches from he's ever had. He doesn't sell his watches. And i got to say, I do miss my 1016. I would like that back. Of course I would. The Chicago mob out there, if you're watching there, I would like that back. Archie would like his, his, um, his, his, his piece back there. Um, look, in all honesty there, I actually, the one I really missed, the watch that I really, really missed, uh, it was actually the annual calendar. The annual calendar, that's the 5035, that watch there, I really miss that. That watch meant a hell of a lot to me. I just, um, I, I really loved that watch. That watch, it was, got it for my 40th, it had a lot of memories for me. I remember, I got it and I wore it every day, every day for a year every day for a year i wore that that paddock i just absolutely loved it and i every day i went to work i would wear it now i may have changed it halfway through the day but every day it was worn for a little bit so uh i i love that watch i've got to tell you you've got to work out your own i can't tell you the answers it's what is good for you is different for someone else for me now I like my paddock. I'd like to add more paddock, but they're fucking expensive. Paddock is fucking expensive. I never thought I'd have five of the damn things. I, I, um, I gotta be, I think you gotta be grateful. I am very grateful that I've got so many as it is. I, this is more than I ever thought I would humanly, humanly have. So, uh, yeah, that is a very big achievement to me. Um, so I, I, I now, I get the literature, so I've kind of, I'm backing off a bit. I'd like to get a, a Rolex Steel Sports for my 50th. I'm, I'm thinking, you know, an Explorer 1 would be really cool. Uh, or a Milgauss, I, I love the Milgauss I had. I did, I did love that. I really did love that. I'd like to get a Rolex for my 50th. I really would. I really, really, really would. You've got to design a mythology. What do you want? What is it? What is it that makes you float the boat and you, sometimes you break the rules i mean i'm a paddock person you might say well what's my reverso there and the the reverso that was given to me by my last wife so it's got sentimental value and i love that watch i really do love that watch so 
I, I think in many ways there, you've got to design a mythology. It's good. It's, I mean, rules are meant to be broken. Okay, I, I grant you that. Okay? But if you've got to have some sort of mythology, do you want sports watchers? Do you want different genres? The, a lot of people have different genres. Like they say, okay, I'm going to collect the icons. I'm going to collect the Rolex Sub, a Rolex GMT. I'm going to have a Speedmaster Moon Watch. I'm going to have a dress watch by Jager Le Coutre or Paddock. You collect the icons. You've got to build a mythology. Otherwise, you just end up, you've got no aim. You've got to have some aims. Now, these rules, of course, you can, you can change the rules to suit. But I think it's good to have some rules. What's some rules that I have? Well, <coughs> no fucking shitters. No shitters. No quartz. Um, no shitters, no quartz. Mainly paddock. I, I, I mainly, that's the dream pieces. Like, I, like I'd, I'd love to get a Lange, but I, you know what? I'd rather put, if I had money to be able to afford a Lange, I'd rather put it into another paddock. Because I've, I've got all the paddock books. If I went into Lange, i got to buy fucking Lange books. And, you know, it's... It's, I'd rather stay in paddock. That's my, my ethos. Now, that doesn't mean if a lange fell into my hands, I wouldn't lick, it, lick the asshole of the guy giving it to me. Of course I would. But I've got a mythology. I've got a certain mythology for me. So you've got to make it work. You've got to make this baby work there. And i got to tell you the truth. That's one of the most important things. The mythology that you create for your collection is very, very, very important. You've got to set up some... This is your inner being. I mean, this is more important than the bitch you fuck. This is more important than the bitch you fuck. You've got to build your mythology. This is for you as a man. Your whole meaning of life is this collection. You're, it's the hoarding, the possessing. It's the material goods. That's what you've got to do, man. Get the material goods done right that's what you've got to fucking do listen to me listen to me it's the material goods you got to build this rules of your mythology so uh <clears throat> very important very 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 important guys okay so that's the second topic the baby steps the seven baby steps the archie luxury seven baby steps the horological fulfillment Tell me what you think. Like, subscribe. Tell your fuckhead friends. Don't be afraid to put some nasty comments. And also, guys, if you really like this series, chip in a few bucks. PayPal me and say, hey, here's a donation for making this series. Otherwise, I could just peter out and die this series. Because I need the money, man. It's fucked. It's really fucked. See you later. Hi, guys. Archie Luxury. And who do I recommend in America? In America, who do I recommend for... Quality pre-owned wristwatches. David SW, David SW, David SW. Go to davidsw.com. He is the best, the greatest pre-owned dealer in all of the United States of America. David SW, David SW, David SW. I want to promote KK Design which is a San Diego-based interior designer who specializes in full-service residential and boutique-style commercial spaces from start to finish. Reach her and check out her work at www.katek.design. Kate K all the way. I want to introduce a new company. This is Fame City Property Solutions. That's correct. They're located in Northeast Ohio. And Fame City Property Solutions replaces non-efficient lights with energy saving LED lighting. Now, I gotta tell you, the guys at Fame City, Fame City, they will install energy saving LED lights at office buildings, commercial warehouses, home improvement stores, grocery stores, schools, parking lots, and other residential homes. Now, you can email these guys at famecitypropertysolutions at gmail.com. That's all one word there, famecitypropertysolutions at gmail.com. <laughs>